Hey guys, Jeremy here with Simple Little Life. Yesterday I made this workbench and I did the entire thing out of materials that I had laying around. Now I will admit I'm a bit of a materials hoarder, especially steel. You know, if I find this stuff in the garbage or people, sometimes at garage sales I find this, I always hold on to it, store it away, and it comes in really handy for projects like this. Now this was a really quick build, I didn't want to spend a lot of time on it, but I just needed another work surface and some more storage. So let me show you how I made it. So I figured this is probably one of the perfect projects for my portable bandsaw. I get asked a lot of questions about this saw, and this is the Milwaukee Deep Cut Portable Bandsaw. That stand that I made, it holds the saw vertically, but I like it because I don't bolt anything, there's no fasteners in place, and there are no permanent modifications to the saw itself, so it's really handy in that regard. The material I'm going to use for this build are these things. This can be the main frame of the work surface. These are some uh, shelves, or uh, I think they're basically designed to put pallets on top of, so that you could have pallets underneath. Uh, my dad had these in his barn. We we're doing a big clean out, and he was throwing these all away. And I thought, you know what? That is some good steel tubing. I'm going to hang on to those. And I think I grabbed about eight of them at the time. I've used them for all sorts of different projects, and I believe it's about two and a half by two and a half square tubing, and about one eighth of an inch thick. And again, uh, I've got that arch kind of built into the top, so it's kind of in a sense prefabricated, and I'm just gonna use those existing shapes and kind of work with that as we go. One of the ways that I typically build is that I do not, I don't do any drawings, and basically I just kind of start with the materials and make it up as I go along. Now, the bottom of this shelf is going to be this piece of steel, and this was actually a fabricated motorcycle lift table that I made probably about 18 years ago. And again, I took it apart, I didn't use it anymore, but I kept the steel for it. So what I'm doing right here is just taking the legs off of those big U's, those arches, and I use those just to shim up that lower frame, the frame that was the motorcycle lift table. And literally this is as simple and as ghetto and bush league as my mock-up goes. Kind of check everything, make sure, make sure we got the same dimensions from side to side, look at it, checked it for level, and then I'm using a piece of flat bar just to keep the inside edges flush when I go tack this together and then when I weld it up. Now I did give quite a bit of care when I cut that bottom piece. I made sure I cut it square. Uh, same with those arches. I marked everything. I got them all very accurately cut. Uh, it just saves a lot of time and makes the actual assembly of this project go together very quickly and really not all that much adjustment while I'm welding this together because everything's the same size and it just kind of fits in there really nice. Had to open up the doors to get a little ventilation going on. Also when you're doing projects like this it is definitely best to grind your areas around where you're going to be welding. I didn't on this project. I left the rust intact. I literally just cut them and then welded them. I'm not overly concerned. I've got a good good hot weld in there. I know it could be cleaner had I properly prepared the surfaces, but I wanted to keep that rusted look and I didn't want it to be disrupted at the joint. So I just left it as it was. Now this next part here, what I'm making is going to be some braces for the top. These again are the bottoms of those, uh, those pallet supports we cut off. And what I'm doing is I'm scoring up the one cut just to make sure we have a really nice clean cut. And then I'm cutting these to fit inside of those tubes. It'll kind of make sense in a minute when we weld it into place. Right here, I'm using my Makita cold cut shop saw. I have no affiliation with Milwaukee or Makita, but I get a lot of questions. And that cold cut chop saw is absolutely a genius. If you do any metal fabrication, like much of it at all, you really need to do yourself a favor and get away from those terrible abrasive cutoff discs, those 14 inch cutoff saws, and get a cold cut chop saw. It is absolutely the way to go. I love this saw. I use this one all the time. So what I'm doing right here is just uh, setting up some temporary supports uh, that are going to hold these braces. So there's the one that I just cut down and you can see I basically matched it so that we kept the, you know, the same width from the bottom of the bench to the top. And you see how that T kind of comes down into the center there. I'm going to take another one of those feet and weld the whole thing together. So basically we're going to have uh, this gusset kind of a thing going across. Definitely an overkill, you know, we don't need that much support in the center of the bench, but it doesn't hurt. And again here I'm just using the flat bar and I've clamped it to the top sides and I'm letting gravity kind of hold it. 
And one thing I'm not going to be doing is welding on the top. I'm going to leave no welds on the top, just like there's nothing I have to grind down. Again, I just want this to be a real quick build, so I'm simply doing vertical welds to hold this top brace in place. Um, and I think it's, it's going to suffice. I, I don't have plans for heavy, heavy work for this table. This is mostly just something where I, I wanted a metal one because I do want to be able to make some changes in the future. But I, I didn't want to, you know, I, I just I just scabbed this thing together. I, I started cutting up pieces and thought, well, can I reuse any of these pieces any other places? And this is what I came up with. I literally had no concept of doing this for bracing when I started building this. It wasn't until afterwards that I thought, hey, let me use those T's, weld them together, and uh, I'll make that for my top support. So... That's how it goes sometimes. Uh, that's, that's how I like to build things and typically it works out just fine. Again though, I am measuring everything out. So this little H, I guess it has become now that we weld in. I mean, it's centered in this frame, everything's square and you know, you, you need to you take your time and do things properly. But I'm not much of a drawings guy, not much of a, I just like to let her rip, you know? Get your steel, just throw it together, see what happens. And then I'll just weld these pieces together in the center. And that basically will make the top and the bottom of this frame. Now for a topper, in the future what I would like to do is buy a butcher block countertop from Ikea. They're pretty cheap and I've got them all over my shop already. Uh, but in the interim, I just found this piece of plywood out in my shipping container and it was 25 inches wide, which incidentally was the exact same size as the butcher block counter is. So I thought this could be perfect. So for the interim, I just have a couple of screws in here. I had those self tapping screws, but the only ones I had on hand were too long and uh, they weren't working quite well. So what I did is I just took a drill bit that was the same diameter as the main shank of a wood screw. And uh, so I drilled that out and then it worked well enough. Maybe it was a little bit oversized from the main shank, uh, but you can see that's just a typical countersunk wood screw and uh, with a pilot hole in the steel, it held in there just fine and it'll hold that top on. Now for the bottom shelf, I didn't have any plywood that was the right width. So I just cut a whole bunch of two by fours to length and uh, I wish I had plywood because it would have been easier, but I had tons of scrap two by fours laying around in varying lengths and uh, I'll kind of just set them all in. And then when I get to the very end of it, I'm gonna rip one down lengthwise and it's gonna be a real nice tight fit for that last little bit. And it'll kind of wedge everything together. So I'm not using any fasteners to hold the bottom on. <laughs> Whoops. Now I had added the second shelf. I wasn't sure if I was going to, but when I saw all that space, I thought, yeah, I'm gonna put a second shelf in there. And the way I space it up is just with a piece of plywood and essentially both sides of the shelf, like both bars that go across, I'll weld those at the same time with the plywood holding them up and just temporarily kind of supporting the other end. That way I can get a very consistent, repeatable height uh, from side to side and it's very quick. You know, you're not taking clamps, you know, you're not measuring things, you're literally just putting your plywood in there, making sure it's tight against the frame and resting your angle iron on it and welding it up. So it's a really, really quick, repeatable way. It's a very, uh, I just I just like it. Just kind of a old Bush League fabrication. And even that, that size of that plywood, that was the off cut from the top. And so I didn't even cut that to size. I just kind of guesstimated and said, yeah, yeah, that'll be a good, uh, good spacing for an upper shelf. So that's how we did it. Now I, uh, I don't use this welder all that often and every now and then it gives me some trouble. So I found out we are out of wire and it certainly doesn't run well when it's uh, low on wire, but then also my main drive wheel had come loose. So I tightened that up, put a new spool of wire on and I'm really happy this thing's welding better than I think it ever has before. So with the welder back in operation, I went ahead and welded the other side of these angles in place. Again, using that plywood to space everything up. And I'm just lining everything up to the inside of the frame again. Just kind of keep it consistent with the lower shelf. And then I went and cut a bunch of two by fours for that second shelf. And uh, again, these were just all scraps. Some of them have paint on them. You know, we use them for supports, for standing boards. Not the prettiest things on earth, but it works. It works for me. And then uh, we'll kind of get into place here, clean up a little bit so I can get the table saw out. And what I'm gonna do now is rip those last pieces 
to act as a wedge to kind of squish all the 2x4s together on the top shelf and the lower shelf. And uh, that way I don't have to use any fasteners. And again, mostly just to save time. As long as those boards don't move around, I don't really care if they're screwed down, right? Because whatever's sitting on them is going to hold them down just fine. And uh, just hammering them in tight like that worked really well. Again, saved me a lot of time and effort. And there we have the finished product. Really happy with it. Uh, wasn't overly complicated. And there's a little build that I got finished quite quickly. But I've got a really good stout work surface. Pretty happy about that. Now I'll just clean everything up. And a uh, big thing for me is when I park the vehicle in here, I want to make sure I get all the metal shavings all tidied up and cleaned up. So I get a little crazy. I vacuum my garage floor quite often, actually. I think if people saw how much I vacuum my garage floor, <laughs> they would think I'm nuts. But... I just like a nice clean workspace. And at the end of it all, we can put the tool that started it all back in its place, put the Velcro back over the trigger, put the cutting table back on, good to go. Good boy. And there you have it guys, a really, really simple project and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Even my wife, when she got home, she said, wow, that actually looks really cool. That'd be like a neat hutch or something for your house. A lot of times people will put the patina on, make that rusted look afterwards, but I didn't have to because this steel was already sitting out in my field for a couple of years. And that's also one of the reasons why I didn't grind the joints when I was welding them. I didn't want to have that ugly transition. And I think it actually turned out pretty good, super solid. I've actually made provisions in the future where I can put some uh, retractable wheels so I can move this around, but that's gonna come down the road. I just needed another workspace in here right now, a place to put my camera gear when I'm filming and stuff like that, and then just some additional storage. So really happy with how it turned out, fun little project. If you like this video, guys, please give it a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed to my channel already, please consider doing so. And as always, I thank you so much for watching. Cheers.